G'day everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise TNA. Today we're going to go over custom, some custom calendar TNX. Now, specifically we're going to look at month-on-month -month change. So I, I find a, in a lot of cases these custom calendars are confusing a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of people out there, mainly because it's, it's actually quite hard and you have to understand uh, a number of things around how DAX works and how to actually use utilize many DAX functions at once to get the result you want. Now the, the problem with these custom calendars, right, is that you can't use the native time intelligence functions because you may be looking at things by, by financial year or the uh, 455 five calendars or, or, or something of that nature. And it's just unfortunate that the time intelligence calculations, whilst are very, very smart and make your life very easy if you're using a custom calendar, unfortunately they don't actually work over these, um, these custom ones. So uh, I've got a couple other videos on this though, so um, this is just another one to, that, to this series. Um, that um, that are certainly worth checking out. But in this case, what I'm going to show you is how you can uh, find out the month-on-month -month change. So we're going to look at the absolute number, and we're also going to look at the percentage change. Now, before we get to there, we've got, we've got to implement um, some logic, which is a little bit um, tougher, uh, or, or it just takes a little bit more to get your head around before we actually get to that point. And that's actually working out the previous month sales. So if we have, if we have a look at um, this table here, you'll see, you'll see that I've got total sales here, which is a very simple calc. So um, that's just generic total sales calc that I use in many, many of my examples. And now that, that's easy, right? Because all you got to do is put that onto a particular context from your customer calendar. And so I've got fin year and I've also got fin month and that automatically goes and filters the table, the underlying fact table, and then gives me my total sales amount. And so if we look down the list, that's that's a relatively simple calc. That's no different to if you just had a, a, a normal calendar. But where the issue comes in, let's have a look over here. Let's have a look at this table on the left-hand side. Let's have a look at this fin month number. And we'll come to the end of, um, say, well, this is the last, last week in the financial year of this particular calendar. And so obviously this is the last day. But look at the actual date. It's the 27th of April. And so really weird date, right? And, um, and then you jump into the new financial year and you're not even into the new month. And so that's where it gets a little bit confusing and where we've got to build some logic here to get the previous month's sales because we can't go look at any particular month. We have to go look at a particular number. We need to work with this financial month number column. Okay, so I've set up the formula. I'm not going to write it out because it's actually a bit to it, but I'm going to walk you through it slowly so that you can actually try and get an understanding of how um, how you could actually write this out yourself. And as always, you can download this resource um, just via a small investment. Um, you can check that out in the description below if you want to actually um, ultimately copy this copy this formula um, into your own models. But let's have a look. Okay, so, um, so I've used variables here and I highly, highly recommend it because uh, it enables you to break out these um, these formulas as as, uh, you know, as as intuitively as you can. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So first of all, we've got to work out, okay, well, what is the current month that we are in in any particular context? And that's what the selected value does. It goes and says, okay, well, if we are on the 10th month in 2014, then that's going to return 10. And then if we look at current year, it's doing exactly the same thing. That's going to, if we look at exactly the same row here, that's going to return 2014. And this one here, what we're doing here is we're trying to work out well, what is the max month number. That's all that this is doing. So we're looking at the max financial year, financial month number across all of the um, all of that calendar table. Basically, this is going to return the number twelve, and I'll show show you why in a second. We need to actually get this number. Okay, and then uh, let's let's forget about uh, this one at the moment. Let's let's just jump out down to the core measure in here. So let's have a look at this one in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to we are going to sum up total sales. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. But we're gonna we're gonna sum up total sales in a different context because think about logically what we're trying to do. We're trying to jump back to the previous financial year month and go and grab that number and bring it into the current context. So if we look at this row down here, 2014. Um, month 10 well we need to actually jump back to month 9 this 1.356 million and drag it into the 10th month so that's exactly what this this logic and this formula is doing so what we're doing is we're saying okay we'll go and have a look through the calendar ta table and if the current month is one so if the current month is one then 
go and find the 12th month of the year before because that's where we have to go and work out this dynamic um uh, the, the, that's what this calc is brought in to do in theory what we could do is we actually could just write a 12 on there because there's always going to be 12 months right but um this is just another way to dynamically do it i, I use a similar technique in a, if we're doing a week on week change for example but anyway this is going to evaluate to 12 but then we want to jump back and say look at the year before so if we're in 2015 month one we want to jump back to the 12th month in 2014 and that's how we drag that number down there and then if it's not the first month then all we've got to do is go and jump back in the current year back one month right and that's what this line of the code is doing okay so i've gone over a little bit there i've walked you through it step by step um hopefully that makes sense right but this is this, this I think this maybe looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. It's just a matter of getting your head around a few different formulas there, right? And that's why, as I said right at the beginning of this video, custom calendars can be a little bit confusing because you've just got to understand a few formulas to make them all work in together. Okay, so once we've got this calc, because we're trying to work out month on month, right? So we have this calc, right? And I put it into a table. I always recommend putting these into a table. So you can see the numbers, just so you can make sure that they're correct. And very quickly, I can identify, well, these are correct. And then all we've got to do from here is, well, we've just got to go total sales minus the previous month sales. And all I've done is I've put a bit of blank logic in here to say, well, if there is no previous month sales, then make sure it's blank. So this top number here in the table is actually blank because we don't want to bring it through because it's just an er erroneous number, doesn't make any sense. And then from there, to get the month on month percentage change, then all we've got to do is then go divide month on month change by the previous month sales. So there you have it. That's how you work out month on month change for a custom calendar. So little, little bit to it, and that's just unfortunately the case with custom calendars. There's just no way around that. Um, time, the time intelligence calcs are absolutely brilliant, but they only work over those standard calendar tables, which just unfortunately isn't the case for all businesses out there. Um, and so hopefully with these custom calendar uh, videos that I've created, you can um, be, um, you know, you can get some way down the um, the down the line so that you can understand uh, you know, how, how these actually work in, um, in your own models and you can implement them in your own models. That's, that's the key. That's what I want, to, I want you to achieve. Okay, so as I mentioned um, earlier, you can download it. Just check out the description below for that. Uh, for, it just requires a small investment. And um, don't forget to subscribe. If, um, if you're liking this content from Enterprise DNA, then um, certainly subscribe because I'm putting out heaps and uh, you'll get it as soon as it's out. Okay, all the best with this one. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.